Polymer is based on the idea of using grid devices without having to use the grid, so it acts like any other instrument device. On the surface, the structure is from a simple subtractive synthesizer, that is, an oscillator with an optional sub going through a filter that has its own envelope, and then goes to the envelope for the amplitude. It also has an engine, a high-pass filter, a gliding knob, and a global pitch. That sounds simple, but the charm of this synth is being able to choose any grid oscillator, any grid filter, and any grid envelope. With this button, you can see the actual grid patch, and to modify it, you have to right-click and select Transform it into a grid patch. The grid may not be for everyone, and that's where Polymer comes in handy. It also allows you to use modulators, effects, and containers with a user workflow. <laughs> Of course, if we are going to break down Polymer, we need to break down all the stuff that you can choose. Let's start simple. On the top of the oscillator, the filter and the envelope, you have the name of the device you're using. And when you click that, you have the list of all the available devices. And by the way, I'm using 5.1. And that's why you can see that now all of these devices have different categories. On parametric, we find the ADSR, the AD, and the AR. The ADSR has three different modes, and it's on R or digital where you can edit the curve. The difference between AD and AR is that the latter would make a sound as long as you're pressing a key, and AD acts more like a plug and has the option to be a loop, which makes it into some sort of LFO. On physical we can find the plug, where we have attack, decay and release, and on free we have segments. I have actually two videos on the MSEC devices, but basically on segments you can make any shape you want, use it as an envelope, loop it like an LFO, or even go back and forth. Before showcasing the filters you can choose, you will notice that every filter will have a drive knob and an envelope modulation amount. The drive is useful for filters designed to add coloration to the sound, and the envelope modulation is hard rooted to the simple ADSR at the bottom. It would be amazing to also be able to choose different filter envelopes, but I guess we are limited by space. Still, the basic ADSR is more than enough, and you can always use modulators. What's interesting about this envelope is the little icon right here. When you turn it on, this envelope also affects the amplitude of the sub. And by the way, the sub is an oscillator that can be tuned one or two octaves below the main pitch. So, for instance, you can have a constant sound from the main oscillator, but with a rising sub. But let's go back to the filter so we can check the different types. We have a structural, inspired, and character. On the first group, we have the low pass LD, which is a ladder type filter with four slopes and optional non linearities. Silent key, which has a lot of different types of filters and slopes depending on the poles. SBF, which is a set slope four mode filter with higher resonance. And the last one is different as it's a comb filter. Comb filtering is a whole topic, but basically it's based on a delay. And it sounds like this. It's often used for physical modeling. The next category are the inspired filters, which are basically emulations of famous stuff, like the Moog or the Sam filter. On 5.1 they added a new one, which is emulating one of the most famous filters out there, the mouth. <laughs> 5.1 on character we have the rest of the 5.1 filters, which I explained on this other video. Basically they add a lot of color and resonances to the sound. With the depth of all of these filters you can already start making complex sounds, despite the quote unquote simplistic look of polymer. But things get to the next level thanks to the different oscillators. What makes them different compared with the other synthesizers of Bitwig is the ability to choose retriggering, key tracking, ID tuning by 24Hz, up or down. Not only that, they also include the phase modulation knob present on the grid. What's even better, this oscillator section can also be synced to the sub-oscillator, giving you yet another nice way to get unique sounds. Oh, 
Remember to give a like to this video. It may be something simple, but motivates me a lot to keep making tutorials. But thank you in advance. So the oscillators are divided in three groups, geometric, techniques, and data. The first group has the typical waveforms, but of course they are presented with their own bitwig twists. Sine and triangle have skew and folding knobs. Square has pulse width and sinking options. And the saw has shape and sync. So each one is a simple oscillator that offers their own unique way of sound mutation. I believe the techniques category has that name because each oscillator is based on a different synthesis technique. As for instance, phase 1. And despite the name, don't confuse it with phase 4. Phase 4 is a FEM and phase 1 is actually phase distortion. Similar to the Casio CC, you have different shapes that you kind of bend or squeeze to get different sounds. That's the easy explanation because phase distortion requires mathematics to explain. The F below the shape is the number of cycles of every waveform. And the knob on the right is FM feedback, which you can use to get a more sawtooth kind of sound. Or even noise. The simpler oscillator is Union, basically a triangle, a square and a sawtooth wave with their own individual gain knobs. Oh, and pulse width for the square. Swarm is unison based, but it's like classic synths. It spreads the fine tuning, but not the panning. These controls basically are the detuning amount and how each voice is organized. Then we have Byte, an FM syncing pulse width modulation ring modulation oscillator, which is better explained on this other video. So let's just make something crazy with it. The third group is Data. Here we can find Scroll, which was introduced on Beat with 5. This is an oscillator where you can draw any waveform you want. It's a pretty simple concept, it's all about freedom, and can give experimental sounds with ease. On this group we also find the wavetable. If you are familiar with wavetables, that's great, and if you're not, well, watch this video. For starters, basically a wavetable is a morphing wave, and depending on the position or the index, you will have a different sound. Now I gotta say that I would love to have the option to look at the visualizer on 2D, or having the index position on a different color, as many of the wavetables can get really noisy to the eye. If the wavetable has a small amount of wave shapes, you can disable the fading with this button. With these three icons on the top, you can change how the phase is distributed for the waves. This is going to slightly change the sound, but check the waveform on the oscilloscope. The wavetable also has a really good stereo unison engine. It offers up to 16 unison voices with the tuning and stereo spread knobs. It also has a toggle option to change the phase dispersion, similar to the other one. FAT, where all the voices have the same amplitude, FOCUSED, where the voice in the middle has the higher amplitude and the further away from the center, the less amplitude the voices will have, and COMPLEX, which I'm not sure how it works, but it gives a more stable tone. Even if you go 100% with the detuning, it still sounds very musical. On the way you see it, Polymer has a simple structure, giving you set positions for building blocks, but it's inside each of these blocks where you can find the complexity, especially for the oscillators and the filters. So depending on the things you choose and how to use them, you can get really advanced and complex sounds. Of course, to get the most out of any synthesizer on Bitwig, you need to learn how to use modulators and effects, and for that, go and watch this video. Thank you so much for watching, if you like the video, subscribe to the channel, and I will see you next time. Bye bye.